am uh, co-chair with Shirley Thompson of the Summit Planning Committee. And so Shirley and I have worked together for quite a long time on uh, putting together a summit that is really going to uh, draw together as many community organizations and as many people from the community as we possibly can because we really want to get out the message that um, race matters. There, there are things that um, if you are a person of a particular race, uh, life is a lot tougher for you. And uh, there are lots of inequities uh, attached to that and a lot of um, structural uh, situations that go on that we really want to change. I've been with uh, Facing Race and Bracing Equity for about three years. And I have also been on the Juvenile and Criminal Justice and Race work group. And so I know a lot about some of the programs that they're going to be doing. Um, I also know that there are a lot of other really exciting programs going on. Um, one of them is a program about um, the concept of cultural humility. And that's something that I think I really could use and so I'm kind of interested and would like to go to that program. Um, there are uh, several programs about juvenile justice issues. There are other uh, programs about education issues. Right now, the, um, there's a lot of talk about what's going on in the Rochester schools around education. So um, we're hoping that people will come uh, so that we can talk together about not only how, to, how will the school district change, but how do we support what the school district is doing? And how does the community support itself in light of the really tragic uh, circumstances that have happened here in Rochester recently? So there's a lot of uh, good things going on. One of the important things about uh, this particular summit, summit, which is unique from other years, is that the breakout sessions are a full two hours. We heard from many people who had attended prior uh, summits, and this is our third, um, that they really wanted a lot more time to simply talk. They wanted more time to learn about what some of the work groups and some of the other community organizations are doing. They also wanted to talk about solutions. And when you have a short time for a breakout session, uh, a lot of that dialogue doesn't take place. And so we're really excited this year that we can offer 12 very good breakout sessions and each of them will have two hours and then 15 minutes uh, of time allotted to them. And you know, tell me um, a little bit about your work in the community. I'm a person who wears a lot of hats. Um, as I mentioned, I'm part of Facing Race and Bracing Equity. I have been a member of the Juvenile and Criminal Justice and Race work group for quite a while. I'm also on the Program and Events Committee, which gives me the opportunity to work with Shirley and other people to plan the summit, the community summit, which we have each year. And I'm also a member of um, the Community Task Force on School Code and Climate which is very related to some of the things that Facing Race and Bracing Equity is looking at. This uh, school code of climate um, needed to be revised. Uh, it, it had a very strong zero tolerance um, uh, emphasis, and we found that zero tolerance just does not work. It took us a long time to learn that, but we've learned it. And so we're putting together other people in the community task force that put together some revisions to the code of conduct which are really very exciting. They're looking at ways to, um, to provide a, a list of criteria for how a student either may or may not be suspended from school or expelled about the process that it goes through uh, if that in fact is going to happen and we have also stipulated that s suspension and expulsion should only be used as a last resort. So there's really major steps being taken in that um, direction. And my other hat, I'm uh, on the board at Partners in Restorative Initiatives, and that kind of ties in with all of what we're talking about. But um, another part of the code is to bring many more restorative practices and measures to the uh, kind of interactions that people have in schools uh, with children and with uh, faculty and staff. So all of that brings me to being very excited about the uh, Community Summit on Race. I think race has a uh, influence, either for bad or for good, um, on many of the topics um, that I'm interested in. And so I'm really excited 
that this year is going to be such a varied uh, summit, but also one that really gives people some time to talk and to look uh, in much more in depth at some of the topics that we're going to be presenting. So what, uh, what makes you so excited about this year's annual uh, summit on race? Okay. I'm going to be um, Okay. Um, we have, um, for instance, one of the um, topics is going to be readdressing power imbalances through cultural humility, the one I mentioned a minute ago. Um, uh, Jean Carroll from the YWCA is going to be offering a uh, breakout session on witnessing whiteness. It's a program that I had attended, so I know that that's very, very good. Um, we're looking at um, how to achieve the American dream. Um, how can we create a practical program of land and housing for all in Rochester, which is something that is not being addressed. What does, what does that mean? A practical program um, of land and housing for all, okay. Without equal access to land and housing, the land, in quotes, of opportunity, the American dream has proven elusive to many, especially communities of color. Historically, which groups have had more access to land and affordable housing, and how this, if, how this effect affects our current problems with housing insecurity, displacement, and homelessness. Uh, and so Ryan Acuff from a group called Take Bay of the Land is going to be doing that, and he'll be joined by several other people from the community. Uh, Tim Wider is going to be doing a conversation about race and poverty. We've talked about race and housing. Uh, race and education, uh, race and juvenile and criminal justice, race and health, and uh, one of the things we haven't really looked closely at is race and poverty. And I know there's an anti-poverty initiative here in Monroe County and Rochester, but this is something that we decided we really need to begin to focus on as well. So that's the other thing that's really exciting about this year. There is a lot of synergy going on. It's, 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 um, it's wonderful to see the stars line up, if you will, um, that people are really interested in education, people are really interested in poverty, and the impact that race has had on opportunity for anyone who is a person of color. And maybe it's time that the community is really going to come together and do something about it. So breaking down some of those barriers is what the conference is all about, or the summit is all about. And we're, we feel like we're pulling people in and we want them to stay in and um, begin to work with us uh, to move on some of these goals. Let me see. Um, the school to prison pipeline is going to be discussed. Um, it's something that I've been working on too. Um, there's the four on juvenile and criminal justice, which have to do police to do with police and community relations, judicial and community relations, uh, raise the age. And, and Raise the Age is a fascinating uh, uh, topic right now. It's one that we all are, at least most of the people I've talked to are for, uh, Raising the Age. It seems ridiculous that we are one of only two states that still treats people who are 16 and 17 as adults across the board. Um, but there's also a lot of complications going into that or related to it having to do with um, whose jurisdiction will people of that age be under and who will pay. I think who will pay is probably the largest issue, but we have a program on that. Um, we also have a program on race and justice partnerships, and we have several people from uh, the judiciary who are going to be here for that. Um, we have a wonderful program by Tim Wider uh, that's going to talk about um, developing authentic alternatives, real alternatives, moving people from the streets to jobs, and that is, that is something that's very dear to my heart. And then another one about education, it says, it's, the title is The Historic and Ongoing Impact of Racism on Public Education. So we're really trying very hard to, um, to look at each of those topics in a very direct way to see how race impacts those topics and to see if there are structural or institutional barriers that need to be changed. And that's really what this is all about. Okay, very good, thank you. And why should members of the community attend the summit? And how can they register? Yes. Uh, people should attend the summit because it's a, from my point of view, a golden opportunity. Like I said, the stars are lining up. 
Uh, there are many, many wonderful groups and organizations in the Rochester area who are working hard to, on particular pieces of the pie, if you will. This will bring people from all of those uh, organizations together, and I think that's very um, fortunate for those who are going to be able to attend. Uh, people who want to register for the summit should go to Face Race Rock, F A C E R A C E R O C dot org slash summit 2015. Okay, and also, um, they, I wanted to ask how it, um, it's a very sensitive er area of mm -hmm. talking about race. Yes, it um, is. And it right. gets, what, how do you make it into a place that, um, that people can feel comfortable sharing their thoughts and ideas and opinions in a way that is truthful and honest, mm -hmm. make it a comfortable mm -hmm. and, and environment for exchanging ideas and thoughts and opinions, even if it's not a popular thought or opinion. No kidding, right. It's, it's a wonderful question. We really want this to be a very welcoming uh, uh, atmosphere that people are going to walk into. We want it to be a safe space. We have thought a lot about that and how are we going to create that kind of feeling. And so in addition to um, inviting people to have lunch and, and to have conversations at their own tables, we're going to, in each of those breakout, excuse me, not all of the breakout sessions, but in many of the breakout sessions, have a trained facilitator who specifically has been trained and the training is going to happen um, later this week, actually. No, no, next week, I'm sorry. Um, specifically so that they are able to handle difficult subjects and sensitive subjects. And so we have many good folks who have organized many of these breakout sessions who are not so sure that they know how to handle those very difficult conversations. We're going to ask people to agree on guidelines about what is going to occur in the breakout sessions. We really want uh, a lot of interactive things going on. We're trying very hard not to make it a PowerPoint anything. Uh, it's not going to be a, someone talking at people. And we're going to make sure that everyone's voice is able to be heard and that people are not ridiculed or put down because their opinion may be slightly different from someone else's. Okay, and um, just to... Um just to let people know, what uh, is there a cost or a fee for this? Mm, that's a great question. Uh, no, there is no cost. Uh, it is open to all. And um, we're, we're trying very hard, I forgot to mention this, we're trying very hard to reach out to uh, Hispanic, Latino, and other ethnic uh, groups here in town. We really want to expand our horizons, if you will, uh, because these topics tend to um, also impact people who are in, in some ways a minority in our community and we want uh, people to know that, that we are um, welcoming to all. Okay, well thank you. You're welcome. Do we hear everything? Yes. Okay.